Time now to talk about cold water, which in Tasmania is never too far away, Nick. And the effects of falling into cold water can in fact be deadly. Whether it is the lakes, Andrew, or the sea that surrounds our states, there are serious ramifications for falling in the drink. And we're here at the Australian Antarctic Division to discover more. Tasmania is surrounded by water that's cold enough to kill, and it doesn't matter what time of year it is. Whether it's in the state's Highland Lakes or off the coast, even in summer, if you find yourself in the drink for any length of time, you can quickly get into trouble. Some people say it's uh, water less than 25 degrees, but practically uh, here in Tasmania, we'd be thinking of it, uh, water less than 15 degrees. Uh, it, resonates with people and uh, and we can demonstrate physiological changes with uh, uh, when you have a sudden immersion in cold water. Should you fall into cold water, there are three impacts of sudden immersion that you should know about. And the first one happens immediately. So the cold shock response is, is one of the most important. So as soon as you fall into cold water, uh, your body goes through a number of uh, physiological responses and the first of that is uh, there is an involuntary gasp reflex. If you're under the water uh, within 10 or 12 seconds you have to take a gasp and that is where you are at risk of uh, inhaling the water whether it's uh, sea water or, or fresh water. That is you know, a potential cause of immediate drowning if you uh, are got, haven't got your head above the water. It's an involuntary response, so the idea is to be keeping your head out of the water and keeping your, uh, with your flotation device, PFDs on, and uh, ensuring that you don't um, uh, get submerged. Keeping your head above water is the only way to ensure that the involuntary gasp won't mean you'll swallow water, and that can be done by always wearing your life jacket. After the uh, cold shock response, the other aspects of the cold shock response I should uh, let you know is, is that you have uncontrolled increased breathing, rapid heart rate and especially if there's a lot of uh, wave splash around uh, whilst you're trying to uh, control your breathing over the, that first minute. Um, the wave splash can cause inhalation of, of water. Then the next phase of the uh, cold water immersion is actually uh, swimming failure. Within 10 minutes, even the best swimmers, uh, and this has been demonstrated by the Royal Navy in the Olympics, uh, with the Olympic swimmers, that uh, in laboratory conditions, that they will not uh, be able to maintain their swim stroke uh, more than say about 10 minutes. Uh, because of muscle rigidity and, and loss of coordination of their uh, arms and legs. So no matter how fit you are, when in cold water you won't be able to swim for more than about the first 10 minutes. Therefore it's important to conserve as much energy as you can. One method is to adopt the heat position. The risk of uh, cold water immersion is, is hypothermia and that depends on what you're wearing and if you're wearing a, a light clothing or a wet suit or a, a dry suit immersion suit is optimal and so depending on how much insulation you have uh, under that clothing and your body fat and whether you're injured or fatigued and also the sea state um, hypothermia will develop over the next say 40 minutes through to uh, you know, the next six hours depending on the temperature and and all those other uh, aspects of course if you can get out of the water um, that would be even better still because once you're in the water you lose heat 25 times as much as you lose heat on when you're on land just recently, Hobart kayaker William Mary Lees got a first-hand experience of the effects of being in cold water for a significant length of time. After leaving the calm waters of Fortescue Bay, he ventured a little too far out to sea and found himself upside down and in the water. I was a little bit silly and I took a bit of a risk by going a little bit further out, not realising how bad the waters were out there. I almost got up, I think the first and second time, but the waves were just sort of it was just in bad, in bad timing with the waves because they just kept knocking me over every time I got up. So I just had to eject out of the kayak. And um, so after I ejected, I tried flipping the boat back over and getting back in. But again, it, it was, I think it was mainly because it was also side on to the waves. So the waves just kept pushing the balance out. So I couldn't quite get in. 
Luckily a mobile phone in a waterproof pouch and being in an area of phone reception meant William was able to call the police for help. When the police arrived, William had been in the water for about an hour and the effects of cold water had well and truly set in. I thought that my body had actually heated up and um, I was coping with it, but actually it was probably the complete opposite. Um, my body temperature when they checked on the ambulance was 33, but I'm guessing it might have been probably lower than that when I was in the water. And um, near the end, my legs started, when I was sort of dog paddling to the, uh, the coastline, my legs started cramping up and I felt like I couldn't um, extend my left leg. And um, so I was just sort of limp, it was like I was limping the last few metres. William has learnt many lessons from his experience, including to always carry an e perb when paddling. So remember, in Tasmania, any water can be cold enough to kill. Best tips for survival are to wear a life jacket at all times, carry a form of communication such as an e perb and conserve your energy as best you can, and always stay with the boat.